so many changes happening. Um, all these things that are happening, planned, they're truly planned, you could say, but uh, nevertheless, some of them are still somewhat devastating. Still somewhat devastating. They're finding out more and more that, uh, well, we are. This world is quite unstable uh, concerning both its agenda, where it's going, but there are also those sitting behind the scenes that seem to be setting up everything. I need you to know something. Although this kingdom will rise, although it will rise, the beast system as people know it, it will rise. Um, it most certainly will. But it will also be plunged into darkness. That's a concern many people have. They, they have a genuine fear of this kingdom that's rising. You know what? Here's a greater fear to ensure your salvation with every day, every breath, every moment that passes by. Be assured of your salvation. And you know what? Let's, I, I like the words that Tatum used earlier today on Pastor Paul's show. In fact, that was a very good show. And, uh, but Tatum was speaking about conveying to everyone that sense of compassion one of the key traits of the kingdom of our father is his love directed or commanded towards us and we should never withhold that from another you know what I have had lots of thoughts today and of course yes we're in the book of Jeremiah and if you read that book like I read that book it makes you consider so many things for one, it shows the sincerity of our Father concerning His Word, as does many books in the Bible. But Jeremiah himself was caught off guard by certain things he was to go and tell the people. Reading the book of Jeremiah, you can almost feel the sorrow and pain in his heart. He prayed for forgiveness, as did Daniel for his people. He pleaded for his people. Today in this time we have many Christians, true Christians, that do plead for each other. They do. They plead for each other. They don't want to see their brothers and sisters fall away. They don't want to see them cast away. You know, the punishment is great. The punishment is very great for rejecting the word of the Lord. And who wants to see anybody go through that? Who does? I have no desire to see anybody be punished by the words of the Lord. Certainly, I, I really don't care what they say against um, you know me personally. I don't see myself as a target so much. In other words, I don't react from that. I expect it. What I do see are people who don't quite comprehend the end result of their actions. I really see that. And they need voices of clarity, which only comes by way of you. You know, the Lord sent prophets to Israel over and over and over again. In the Old Testament, He sent pro prophets to His people. Well, He sent us His Son, then disciples, then the Holy Spirit, now we have the Holy Spirit. We're directed to go and convey the words of our Lord to another with great compassion, great patience. All the attributes the Lord showed to us during our life. We owe that same debt of love to our brothers and sisters. Make no mistake, they are suffering, a great suffering during this time. But understand that we, we, everything comes in balance and suffering, although it's in the flesh. It takes its toll, but it also makes a person consider a great many things. We can assist in this good fight. In fact, to have a good fight of faith is to keep your faith. To keep it. To stand on the words of our Lord. It's more, the world is absolutely changing. 
I know that the news media has not reported to anyone a great many things that are taking place. They are withholding quite a few things from the masses. Don't you think for one minute that this world is writing itself? Because it's not. In fact, normally when they retract a story or stop talking about a subject, it has started to panic the public and they pull the story. Anybody notice that the riots stopped in one night? No one hears the horror stories, the threats, corporations threatening people and everything else. The violence has increased in this land. Violence has. They stopped covering the subject just as they stopped covering Ebola and the other sicknesses that are still consuming the lives of people within our borders. Now they're forming stories to capture your attention. Can I share something with you? We have had hackers from all other nations for many years. And they have spoken with few words about the hacking. But they are trying to divert your attention from something that will be so incredibly obvious. You see, what many don't know is there will come a day when men revert to survival instincts. Men will absolutely reject the law because they will feel in their hearts, they will equate in their minds that they must survive. In other words, the importance of the system will die. It will die. The joy they once had in their homes will perish. Even their thoughts about money will evaporate. Folks, there is a transition forming. It's on its way. It will transition the entire earth. And we must stay sober. Understanding that the Lord gave you, you know what? You know what started your search in the first place? You recognized and you felt in your soul that something was wrong. And you went on the internet searching for someone who had the truth. In your discoveries, you stumbled across many different ministers. You kept hearing about prophecy, and you stayed with that mindset. But right now, I can feel in my spirit some people are calming down as though the storm is past. It is not past. They're beginning to get their houses in order, yes, their lives are being put back in order, yes. But the world is about to change. You were drawn to these places, drawn to this place. The Lord put something in you as though he told you to search it out. You couldn't stop. You searched all over the Internet. You went from speaker to speaker attempting to find out or to solve what was in your own spirit. You found bits and pieces of it. And I'm glad that many grew from their diligence in searching. And it has been a long road, and the road's not... It, it, the road still exists, but you've grown some. Don't relax so much that you think any trouble has passed. This world has not seen trouble. That I can assure you of. Though we've had wars, though we've had strife, though we've had nations toppled and rebuilt, this world has not seen trouble. Not yet. Not to the magnitude that it will. We must stay sober. Understanding that, yes, we do live in the end days. We must stay sober. We must do the right thing. 
You see, we have a short time. We don't have a long time. The enemy wants you to believe that you have a long time. You don't have a long time. You don't have a long time. Without notice, trouble will be revealed. When the voice of the Almighty is heard making a sound that will penetrate the bone of every man, woman, and child on the face of this earth. When the winds gather at speed and the skies change and every coastal city will flee for their very lives. When all who trusted in their own devices and in their own protection methods when the land seems to crumble and crack when your mind is flooded with challenges new challenges you have not faced before when it seems hopeless will you be in a position to cry for the Lord in truth stand on his words in truth Will you have the confidence to understand that you are his child? Or did we just simply fake it? Because I can assure you of this. This world will begin to tumble like no one has ever seen it tumble. And all the rich and those who oppress the innocent, all the blood spilt in the land, has caused nothing short of the Lord being furious with the inhabitants of the earth. He will roar from the heavens. The earth will respond in the worst way. He will send plague after plague upon the earth, not a sickness, but destruction. We can't afford to go back to sleep the alarm went off and we must stay awake. We have to stay awake. Satan will attempt to convince anyone things are going on as usual. No, they're not. Sadly, many will never know until it's at their door. But when it's at the door, it'll be the earth that endures this. The earth will respond. It will shake. Your flesh will shake. Stay sober and on the right side of our Father. He's a loving God. He's given us all this time to really get our spirits in order to learn His Word. But he bought you here for a reason. You searched the topics out that you searched for a reason. You were compelled for a reason. Don't drop it now. Don't let Satan convince you that it's futile or worthless. Stay on the path. We have to stay sober. There are facts in the book of Jeremiah that are utterly astounding. Things that a great many people have a hard time hearing. Some things that Jeremiah had a very difficult time hearing. I'm sure Jeremiah's heart was broken. I'm sure he was scared. You see, in the book of Jeremiah, they did absolutely go into captivity in Babylon. But how many know that the Lord has patterns. How many know he has patterns? How many know he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore? How many know that the end was determined or established or defined by the beginning? I'm suspecting vice versa is true also. God walked out this process from beginning to end. But the people lost their way. 
The Lord doesn't play games. He doesn't play games. He's not joking. And sometimes we can be so passive in our own faith that we give room to wrongdoings and say it's okay. I can just go ask forgiveness. Is that going to build your confidence? Assure? Is that going to assure you? You know, the Lord said, work out your salvation in fear and trembling. As we continue to go through the book of Jeremiah, no doubt some of you are going to take another look at your salvation. But understand that Jesus did come for us. But also understand we should never take that for granted. Never. It was a gift. You're going to understand just how much of a gift. You know, the no one will escape judgment. Not one. We can't afford to do exactly what they did back in this day. You see, the Lord sent them into captivity a few times for their good, not their evil. How many know that? How many know that the Lord sent Israel into captivity to actually save them? You know what happened to the rest? They were slaughtered. That's what happened to the rest. It was slaughtered. How many of you know that the Lord will use the kingdom of the beast to accomplish his indignation? How many know that? How many know that the Lord called King Nebuchadnezzar his servant? How many are aware of that? How many know that the Lord told every nation he made Jeremiah prophesy to every nation that if you go against King Nebuchadnezzar, you're going to die. And the Lord continually echoed the phrase, Live. Live. The, the entire world was to be obedient to King Nebuchadnezzar and live and all those nations who opposed him. They did die. They did vanish. The Lord will always use what he uses for his purposes and for his children. The key fact here is for his children and for a filtering process. You want to know why Israel was judged so harshly? Because of the wicked and evil people that were within that place. Because of the false prophets and the dreamers, and the diviners, those who practice sorceries, those who said the opposite of what God said. You see, he said the prophets told him, do not submit to King Nebuchadnezzar. God told Jeremiah to go out and prophesy they lie. I have not told them that. They lie. You see, God's business is serious business. Serious. Yes, we're covered by the blood of the Lamb, but be reminded that the days of the trouble have not started yet. Because this earth is going to change. We can't lose focus. We have to stay balanced, being real children of the Most High, and that's being a peacemaker. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Matthew 5. But this earth is going to shake. There are mountains forming at the ocean floor that will eventually break the surface and explode. Methane is being released more and more which is causing a runaway cycle of the warming of the atmosphere which is causing these chaotic weather patterns it's assisting in it the earth is having 
a real gravitational pull from something giant lurking outside of our solar system. No one's covering it in the mainstream media. Scientists are not quantifying it publicly. They're keeping the information. They're keeping you distracted while they plot and plan their own survival. They have already sentenced you to death. And that is why they must be repaid double for what they've done. And it's only beginning. Now is the time to get serious. We really have to become serious about both being a Christian, being Christ-like, standing as a Christian, walking as a Christian. It is time for us to be what we were called to be. We're not bystanders. It's not what we are. We do not compromise. It's not what we do. The Lord called each and every one of us for something. Time grows short. The day is almost past. There's a time coming that men will begin to die because of the times. Droughts of enormous magnitude. There's a heat that will form. It's going to be unbearable. Temperate forest regions like the East Coast could turn into arid regions like the Mojave Desert. Things will shift. But something. Our Lord is going to change the face of this entire earth. And who are they going to call out to when it does come? Because he's not going to hear them. We need to make a final choice whose side we're on each and every day. And we need to act within that side. Not being a religious person. Not upholding the falsehoods as they did in the books of Jeremiah and Ezekiel. Not carrying a standard established by men. But you were called of the Lord. How many know that that object called, that many refer to as the destroyer, is a real object. How many understand it's on its way back? How many can fathom a drought that lasts 27 years? How many can imagine this world with no food? Revelation is real. And you know what? To be frank with you, the timing of Revelation, when the events take place, the order of the events, right? Does that really matter when people are scorched? <clears throat> Does that really matter when the earth is cracking in many different places? Does it really matter when war has taken its toll. You know, the Lord said, He will destroy the nations of this earth. Do you not understand that the same things prophesied against Israel in the book of Jeremiah that the entire world will undergo? The book of Jeremiah is talking about His fury. His fury. All nations. All nations. Are given a warning. They're going to undergo. Whatever the Lord deemed. For the land of Israel. He's going to utterly destroy. And we have to survive. Before he gets here. 
If you're thinking for one moment, you're not going to have to endure anything. You're not sober. You're just simply not sober. You see, we've had some horrible wars in this world simply because it didn't happen in your generation and in your country. Does not mean a worst war won't come. There will be a war. When the beast forms, he's going to begin to subdue things. It's happening already. How many know that kingdom is being established at a very quick pace? How many know that? How many know that that manner of perdition must be revealed? And those who have lost their compassion are going to suffer something. You see, that's what Satan tries to keep out of your heart. You can do everything correct. You can follow the letter of the law, and I assure you, without compassion upon your brothers and sisters, your neighbor, without showing love to your enemy, without having that debt of love to give to everybody else. He's going to say, depart from me, you work of iniquity, I never knew you. Although you did everything required, you did not exercise love. You see, you can't fake exercising compassion and love to another. And I'm telling you now, the wolves are coming out and the mockeries will really start. The mockeries will start because we have to go through something. But the Lord will never leave us nor forsake us. The weapons of the enemy will not prosper against us. He will be our shield, our wall of protection. But that's only if we are walking with him. This world is dangerously close to something, to a change. It will never go back to the way it was. But it's happening soon. You see, they're staging for war right now. Russia is truly pushed into a corner. Our relationships with Cuba, that itself was against Russia. I don't know if you've noticed already, but the alliances are forming. Russia's being forced into a corner. One day we're going to wake up and Russia and the Islamic forces are going to have the same mindset. You see, as America tends to make friends with these folks, we are still the big Satan in the eyes of Muslims. Not you, but the government, their propaganda, and everything else. You see, you're covered by the land. And war is going to be the least of anybody's worries in the time to come that the Lord will use any evil party for his indignation, folks. And we cannot overlook his indignation because all these things are going to happen simultaneously. We can't ignore the scriptures. We can't do, we can't have wishful thinking when God has already declared something. Wishful thinking is no good. The situation in the United States is failing. And nobody can see it. They think the falling gas prices, oh, that's good, that's great. No, it's not good. It's not great. Because the books are messed up. Alliances are being formed. The real lines in the sand are being drawn. Countries are taking preparatory actions to protect their governments so they will have a type of continuity. You see, this is why we can't afford 
to be drunken with the affairs of this world. Being distracted, the Lord called you for a reason. He called you to be one of the sober ones. What is everybody going to do when the chaos ensues? Not chaos of people pillaging homes and so forth, but when no one has an answer to what's coming. The Hosea prophecy is not going to stop. It's going to get worse. It will surpass their understanding. And then humans will begin to fall prey to the same thing. Not you, but those who absolutely rejected the Lord. Can I share something with you? If a person rejects Jesus Christ, they're given over to someone to be demonstrated on to the whole world. You see, the Lord tends to do things so the whole world can notice them. He doesn't do something in a small area here where nobody can see it. It's not the way he works concerning his prophecies. When the whole entire world can witness something, then it's for the entire world. You're covered by the blood of the Lamb. You're in the secret place of the Most High. Now it's up to you to stay there. Don't walk out now because time is shorter than any of us could imagine. We have a job to do. We have a serious job to do. So let the Lord restore your spirit with joy. You remember that drive you had when you began to search the Internet to find a solution to your soul? What's wrong, Lord? What's wrong? I have to find it. What's wrong? All of a sudden, everybody began to search the Internet. They began to see alternative stories. They wanted to search out alternative stories. They were listening to people who did not talk in the way of the public voices that you hear. But everybody began to search for something. Don't let that die. The Lord is giving the answers. It's going to take your diligence and your integrity to get it because many, many people are about to be divided. And I say that because the same way the Lord divides, divided his people. You know, when they went into captivity in Babylon, they were there 70 years. And they died in Babylon. They can never come back to Israel. That's how the Lord begins to filter people. In the desert, 40 years, the entire generation died out. They died out. You know what's happening right now? All of us are going to endure time that's going to serve as a filter. But this time, the Lord gave us a warning. He told us that offenses must come. That equates to violence. He warned us in Revelation, do not partake in the violence. Those who lead into captivity must they themselves go into captivity. Those who kill with the sword must they, they themselves must be killed by the sword. This is part of the filtering. You see, the Lord already declared that a great many people would die by the sword. You see, everybody who stood against the Lord Jesus Christ is going to die by the sword. You're going to die. The Lord already declared that this violence would come about the entire earth. No nation would be exempt but for his people. You see, their latter captivity is to save the remnant remnant that's true not for the false ones violence is going to be the filtering process people will revert back to a survivalist mentality like a caveman people will think their lives are over they're going to look at the heavens and say what's the use in following anything we're all about to die 
And at that time, people will begin to do the unthinkable. And even before that time, famine, plagues, disease, people being killed more and more by animals. And it doesn't matter the explanation. It matters that it's going to take place. It's happening already. Did you ever notice? And we read in Isaiah 34, the Lord said he will utterly destroy all the armies of the earth. Not once did you read in Revelation were these people that were dying from the fire, smoke, and brimstone, they didn't fight back. Why didn't they fight back? Never once did you read that they fought back. It just simply said those who did not die from the fire, smoke, and brimstone, they did not repent of the works of their hands, nor of what they worshipped in the world. They didn't fight back. When the angel of the bottomless pit opened the pit, and Polyon and those things came out of the pit, it said that men would seek death for five months and would not find it. They were stinging men with the sting of the scorpion. They didn't fight back. The only people that they did not kill were those who were sealed with the seal of God in the foreheads. That was 144,000, which is augmented in Revelation 14, I believe. They were virgins, the first fruits of God. They didn't fight back. The only time they began to fight back is after the thousand year reign and they were gathered together again. Satan went out to deceive the entire earth. Gog and Magog, as it was called, after the thousand year reign. And then the final judgment came. You see, all of it's making sense. First, all the armies going to surround Israel. By the way, that does not happen in one day. You guys are aware of that. Do you see what's happening now? It doesn't matter how they're being called against Jerusalem. It matters that they're being called against Jerusalem. What's happening now? Russia is watching NATO and NATO is watching Russia. We are redeploying back to the Middle East. The armies are in the Middle East. Either themselves or by proxy, they are there. Surrounding what? Jerusalem. And now they're calling. They're calling their own will above God's will concerning Israel. Israel, that land, belongs to the Lord, not to man. And when he looks down upon his land and he sees the damage they cause, and they've done it, but it's happened more than once. Let's not be deceived as though Israel has never seen damage and corruption. Their temples have not been uh, pillaged and defiled and everything else. Let's not act like this will be the first time, because it's not. But this will be the last time. Don't be shocked and shaken when it happens. But understand, you're not in Israel. You're right here in America. What is the fate of America? What is the fate of any nation that turns its back on God? The book of Jeremiah is rich in prophecy. It conveys the true nature of our Father's heart concerning His people. So does the books of Ezekiel. But it's also a book that gives us a warning from speaking falsehoods, being casual about our approach to the Almighty God, taking for granted the salvation given to us through His Son, Jesus Christ. and withdrawing the same love he gave to us withholding that from our fellow man we can't slip down that road we're at the very end of something we're also in the middle of something oh and it's amazing that 70 years they were sent into Babylon then it goes on to say they were sent to Babylon for one generation the Lord must love 70s 
He does everything within the span of one generation. That's why in the book of Matthew, it says something very important. And this is why we don't have time. Because we're going to read it, if you don't mind. There's a curious verse. Matthew 24, 34. And it says this. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Hmm. Let me read that one more time. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Well, the first question you must ask yourself is what generation is he talking about? Well, let's find out. He gave a lot of prophetic sayings here, Jesus did. Lots of them. He said, we'll hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you not be troubled. Earthquakes and floods in diverse places. Can I share something with you? For 2,000 years, this world has been at war. There have been wars and rumors of wars. There have been wars and rumors of wars far before that. Many have come in the name saying they are Christ. And they did deceive many, and they still do the same things. Nation, nation has risen against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. Folks, right now there are famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Right now this is happening. He said all these are the beginning of sorrows. The problem is these things have been taking place for a very long time. Here's a kicker. Let's stay with the end. This generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Well, let me expand on something for you. In order to make that statement saying, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled, whatever generation he's talking about has to be in the position to recognize all those things. Do you not know this is the first generation with digital technology that is able to have instant communication and observation of everything that happens both in the heavens and on the earth according to nation to nation to nation we can see everything this generation they couldn't see that a long time ago Paul Revere could not get a letter that quick we see it instant communication this has become a global community one huge nation already nobody can see that you see through the advent of the computer we have become one big nation what constitutes a nation a law people are able to debate and talk about talk this that and the other a global economy do we not have a global economy do we not we have a global economy established we have global governance established. If that were not the case, they wouldn't have G20s, would they? There'd be no need for it. The key thing here is we can observe all these things. When the Lord says, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, false prophets rising all over the place then he says to this and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then the end shall come now let me back up because here's the context for it he starts out take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying I am Christ and shall receive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye not be troubled for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Now he told them, the end is not yet. So what is he talking about? He's talking about the end of the world. The end is not yet, right? The end. Because the last question I asked him, they said, end of the end of the world. What will be the sign of thy coming in? All these things and of the end of the world. Now he's saying clearly in Matthew 24, 6, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye not be troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. 
then he continues to add in. Before the end, he says, For a nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, and pestilence, and earthquakes, in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. That's when it starts. Then he says something curious. Then he says something curious. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Well, can I explain something to you? If anyone is going to be hated of all nations, then all nations must be aware of the one nation they hate. That means there were nations in existence during the time of Christ that didn't know what was happening in the Middle East. They're aware now. They are aware now. And guess what? Didn't they hand them up to be afflicted and kill them? Does everybody forget the Holocaust? You guys remember the Holocaust? Didn't they hand them up to be afflicted? Didn't they kill them? Weren't they hated of all nations? Huh? Every, we can't forget the Holocaust. It happened. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. These offenses are in the world now. The Lord said, Warn to the world, for these offenses must come. You see, because the offenses come as part of a device for the separation of the wheat and the tares. Both of those tying together. Jesus said so. Let's continue to read. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. You know what, folks? Can I explain something to you? False prophets, they're rising all over the place. Because that, this prosperity gospel, that, that's a false prophet. A prophet speaks the words of the Lord. But the Lord didn't tell these prophets to go and tell all his people to get rich. He did not promise everybody was going to be rich. And they're preaching something wrong. It's not the word of God. They're already out there. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. The love is waxing cold. Iniquity is beginning to abound. That's why every nation has iniquitous things in them. And that's why these nations uphold iniquity, but they cast down any true justice. You know what you're saying? You're seeing iniquity abound. And what's happening to a great many people because of this iniquity? Unfair treatment. And when unfair treatment goes on and it's not checked and there's no justice in the land, people become disgruntled and you have protests in the streets. Interesting. The love of many is waxing cold because the system in their eyes is unfair and it's failing. It's unfair and it's failing. Still speaking in the context, the Lord said, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. It has to be preached in all the world for a witness. Never once did it say everybody had to be saved. It has to be preached. Do you know what the effort is now? The gospel of the kingdom of God has been preached just about all nations for a witness. You know why? Because just about every nation is aware of Christianity. They heard the message. Now listen, it goes further. It, then it goes into detail in Matthew twenty four fifteen, 
When ye therefore, that's almost like saying, okay, I told you all this, so listen. When you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let him which be in Judea flee into the mountains. And again, according to the readings of Jeremiah, Joel, in the books we read last night, Zechariah 14, Isaiah 19.1, Amos 9.10 According to those books they better flee for a reason. If the Lord is telling them to flee to the mountains then guess what? Here's the deal. Here's what everybody missed. Only those who have followed the word of God will ever know to flee to the mountains. The rest are going to stay right there and be slaughtered. I have to pause right there for a minute. This brings up the importance of hearing the word of the Lord. You see, if they're not studying the word of the Lord, they're not going to know to flee to Judea. They could flee they could flee somewhere else. Those in Judea could flee somewhere else and be killed. The Lord told them once before that they would be exiled or, kicked or, or passed into Babylon, but don't fight it. He told other nations, King Nebuchadnezzar, has rules, submit to his rule and live. You know what it's almost it's like he's saying, flee to the mountains, those in Judea, and live. Live. The Lord himself said, live. But he said the prophets would stand in the way at that time when they were fleeing to Babylon and say, don't submit to King Nebuchadnezzar. And in Jeremiah 24, 25, 26, it talks about it. How King Nebuchadnezzar was God's servant. The Lord said he was his servant. He had not spoken to the prophets concerning that. And they lied. They spoke out of self. He didn't give them instruction. He gave Jeremiah instruction. The Lord was very displeased with that. King Nebuchadnezzar had his rule over all nations to preserve them. You see, the Lord said, submit to him and live. Because they had to go into captivity. And you know what people were saying? I'm not going into captivity. I'm not submitting to anything. You see, they couldn't hear the word of the Lord. They had no direction. If you don't have direction from God, you're going to perish. Sound familiar? Here, the Lord is saying, those in Judea flee to the mountains. Then he says this. Let him which is on the house top not come down to take anything out of his house. Either let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Let me pause right there. This indicates... Something horrific is happening here. That's what it's indicating. Something horrific is happening here. He's telling them to flee. Something horrific is happening there. And if they know this, they're going to be preserved. Because he said he would not make a full end of everybody, did he not? He said he would not make a full end. Even those who are driven out, they're going to rebuild the waste cities. Let me keep reading. He says, but pray that your flight not be in winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake. Those days shall be shortened. Now we have the days being shortened. The days of this trouble are going to be shortened. And if the days of the trouble are going to be shortened, there was a determination on the time it was going to happen. The Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. But this is going to be the worst time in earth's history. The worst time 
in the history of the earth. Then if any man... Now the Lord is expanding again. He says, Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. Listen. Why would he give this caution right after he talked about these days of tribulation? Why would he say that? Why would he say then? What do you mean then, Lord? What are you talking about? Then after the days of that tribulation you just described. He said, then if any man shall say, lo, here's a Christ, or there, believe it not. Because there will arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, and so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Then he just stops abruptly. Behold, I've told you before. In other words, now he's, listen, two things. He's talking to his people. He's talking to his people. Now keep in mind, he said, this generation will not pass till all these things be fulfilled. So keep that in mind. He's talking about... Then he starts talking about his coming. Now, this is very important, folks. Please remember this. Because the Lord gave a warning. He said, Behold, I have told you before. That, that's a warning. He says, Wherefore, they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For his lightning cometh out of the east and shineth unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. You know what that's saying? That's saying everyone is going to know when the Son of Man comes. He's not coming just to one particular group of people. No one's going to find him in a hole like Saddam Hussein. The entire world is going to witness his coming. So don't be deceived thinking he's anywhere on earth because when he does come, no one will be able to dispute his coming. As everyone can see lightning, so the world will see his coming. The entire world will. Then he says, immediately, he talks about the carcass, but he says, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Now, what is that describing in Matthew twenty four twenty nine? It's describing the day of the Lord. Correct? That's the day of the Lord. By the way, we read something last night in the book of Jeremiah when he was talking about a day that wasn't really a day, nor was it night. But it was a day, it was a time only known to the, that the Lord reserved unto himself. That would be day nor night. Do you guys remember reading that with us as Max read? I'll come back to that. After the powers of heaven are shaken, it says this, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then all the tribes of the earth mourn. They will mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Now, we just read Zechariah. When they see this, we know the tribes of the earth are going to mourn. We know that the elite and everybody who stood against Jesus Christ their faces are going to be filled with blackness. Their flesh is going to tremble. They'll know the truth, just like they'll recognize Jesus Christ coming, because they did say, in Revelation, hide us from he that sits on the throne, for the great day of his wrath is come, and who is able to stand. They absolutely know who it is. You see, that knowledge opened up in their mind. They're born with an instinct to know who he is. And it will all be discovered again when he comes back. There will be no one who will be able to say, Oh, I didn't know it was you. They're going to know. And then, and then it says, And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. 
They shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now that gathering together, we already know what that is. Then it says this, Now learn the parable of the fig tree. When its branches, when its branch is yet tender, and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise, now hear this, so likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Then he says, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass all these things be fulfilled. What generation? The generation that sees all these things come to pass. When you see these prophecies begin to unfold, the generation that sees these things, that generation will not pass till all these things be fulfilled. And we know God's timing of a generation, His current timing of a generation, not in the days of Exodus, because those people lived a long time. But we hear the number 70 repeated over and over again concerning a generation. He sent Israel into Babylon for a generation, 70 years. He sent them into Babylon 70 years. Now the Lord is saying, this generation shall not pass all these things be fulfilled. Well, first of all, in order for Israel to be hated of all nations, they too had to be recognized as a group to all nations. And they were. Now I'm not setting a timeline. I'm giving you a context. The season that we're in is a very different season. It's a very, very different season. I'm not going to set a time for anything. Because a day with the Lord says a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. But I know one thing. These things that we read about within one generation... All of this is going to take place within one generation. And the generation that begins that sees all these things, that generation will not pass all these things be fulfilled. People messed up in the old days, right? Because they saw a few. They experienced one earthquake where they were. They couldn't get on Facebook or check CNN because there was no Facebook and CNN and they said wow we've had 30 earthquakes in a year the time must be at the door but they could not observe what was happening over the globe we can do that now we can do that now they couldn't do that then we can do it now we can see it and the Lord's people are being informed and the gospel is going out to the entire earth you see, they couldn't, back a long time ago, they couldn't reach the entire earth with the gospel of Jesus Christ so that it would be a witness to all nations. They couldn't do that. They couldn't do it. They did not have the resources nor the logistical power to make that happen. They couldn't do it. But now, guess what? We're seeing it. We're seeing a, a multitude of prophecies come to pass. Israel is a nation, again, hated by all nations. Name one nation that stands with Israel. Name one. Name one nation that stands with Israel. Now, the Lord did not say, and you will be hated of all the people of all the nations for my name's sake. That's not what he said. You'll be hated of all nations for my name's sake. The word nation is inclusive of its government. not the righteous ones within the nation. You see, the gospel was preached to all the nations for witness. But in every nation there is a Christian, or two, or three, or four. In every single nation, someone believes in the blood of the Lamb. Someone is covered by the blood of the Lamb. But they do not represent their government. They don't. And we see this unfolding now. And again, as we're reading through Jeremiah, we're understanding who this harlot is, and I'm telling you what. We see the promises of the Lord that he will not withdraw. We see the destruction, and everybody's looking at Israel, right, for that destruction. But what nobody is counting on 
is that the Lord is, if he does that to Israel, to save the remnant, and he will, because he's going to what? Purge his own land. Oh, and by the way, they are going to part his land. How many know that Israel's land is parted already? How many know that? Just in case you don't know, the land of Israel is parted already. I just want you to know that, just so you know. The land of Israel is not whole yet. In their skirts, in Jeremiah it says skirts, right? That would be the borders of the true land or other folks and people and stuff like that. So the land is already parted. You know what we're missing? You guys know what we're missing? Trouble. Massive trouble from the heavens. It appears, well, that's on its way. That is on its way. And they're not going to, you know what? People's hearts are going to fail them from the storms that are on this earth. They will begin to abandon coastal properties. They will. You see, these storms and these patterns will become devastating. They will. They will increase. You guys are going to see islands taken away. Just gone, taken away. Entities know about this, like NOAA. The Navy certainly knows about it. Navy research laboratories constantly do simulations about it. But the people up top are so conditioned to fun and games, not taking any things seriously, that they're missing it. You see, they're more concerned about someone hacking the Sony Studios. You know what? When I first saw that, I said, well, who cares if someone hacks Sony Studios? I mean, in my mind, I'm thinking, why should that be a big story? But then it hits at the heart of entertainment. And no one's going to be able to see their comedy on Christmas. Are you serious? Is this what the world has come to? Honestly, is this what the world has come to? That a crisis concerns a comedy that nobody can see. Is this what the world has really come to? And then you read the statistical data of those talking about this story. It's unbelievable. People are actually having conversation about the movie. Forget about the riots. Forget about Ebola. Forget about starvation in America. Forget about people people who have already frozen to death inside of America. You know, you heard that one year and they stopped reporting on that. Forget about everything else that's going wrong in America. Because our leadership has absolutely turned its back on anything having to do with the Lord. Forget the fact that we're compromising with other religions. Forget the fact that we're removing Christianity and have embedded, the government has embedded itself in the minds of pastors by way of money in the IRS. Forget about the warnings that pastors are getting concerning the IRS saying that they could be sued for giving out a message that's impartial to anybody or any belief. Forget about that fact. Forget about the policies and the orders that are yet to be passed for emergency action. Forget about the war that's forming. Forget about the terrorists, the messages that they're receiving concerning the U.K. and England. Forget about them. Just ignore that. Forget about the crisis that's about to form. Do you guys see what's happening? The Bible says, and they knew not till the floodwaters came and took them all away. Here we sit with a curiosity about what we feel internally. 
And if we can actually get it in our minds that these prophecies are going to come to pass, we can actually stand up for our brothers and sisters. You see, a lot of people won't stand up for their brothers and sisters. They won't go an extra mile for their neighbor because they feel like, well, I've got to survive another 20 years, and this might set me back three hours out of my 20 years of life. Well, I can't make this sacrifice because I plan to get this, that, and the other in the future. Listen, if you are a Christian, the last person you think about is yourself. Ask the Lord for his love in your life. Learn to recognize his love that's commanded towards you. You see, it's, it doesn't really matter what you have planned for the next 10 years or so, what you have planned for the future outside of him, right? If it's outside of him, it doesn't matter because when the world begins to shift, and it's about to shift in a way that nobody ever thought it would shift. You see, what's coming, and I can't let this go, What's coming is something you did not anticipate, something you really don't believe. And when it comes, it's frightening. It's going to be frightening, devastating, unavoidable, and unchanging. It's going to cause people to react in a very different way. So you know what? Knowing these things, let your love flow from your heart to other folks. There's not enough time to preserve what the Lord put in you. He didn't put something in you because you're a safety deposit box. He put it in you so it can flow out to other people. It's time for us to do that, not to withhold it, not to relax. We have to remain sober. We cannot get caught up in the propaganda through the media and through liars and through all these other folks but we must remain focused on our Lord we can no longer afford to let Satan whisper to us in the ear saying oh you're unworthy that, that there's no one is worthy but the Lord makes a person worthy and who he makes worthy no man has a right to call unworthy and if you have come to the knowledge of the truth which is Jesus Christ is Lord then you have been made worthy we are commissioned we have a job to do and people are waiting people are waiting on another note there has been a, two magnetic anomalies two big ones where they have to do, uh, some vehicles have to now descend, just to let you know that. So there could be a little burning activity in the atmosphere. You see, some of those satellites up there don't have enough fuel to stay in the atmosphere, to maneuver, to go to a higher orbit. And so they're going to have to deorbit. That's going to cost a lot of money. So you need to understand these things. We're always thinking we have time to do this or do that. I'm telling you, you do not. How bad would it be to see a person one day and say, tomorrow I'm going to help this person. The next day you go to see them, they're dead. I know a lot of people put off today. They put off for tomorrow what they can do today. No one is promised tomorrow. The Lord called us today. Certainly during this season, people are depressed this season. They're really depressed. People are saddened, and they feel lonely, and they're starting to commit crimes. You know why? They feel rejected. People feel rejected. They feel abandoned. You know, a lot of in most cases, because the Lord knows I have this appetite to see someone do well. I like to see people do well. You guys have been a blessing in that. You know what? We're finding our, our we, there was a, there's a homeless family that's going to have a home in two days. Two days. Five children. Homeless. Homeless for one, two, three, four, five, six, I think seven months. 
not including this one, they're going to have a home right before Christmas. You know, it's, it, you know if, if, if it's just one, if it's just one family, and then that will trickle to two. You see, these are items that the Lord can actually trust us with. Believe me, it'll happen more and more. But it's a, it's a, it's a matter of integrity. It's what it is. When you go, when you hear a child speak, and you say, what do you want for Christmas? And they say, I want my mommy to have a, her own home or her own house or somewhere to live. And then you say, well, what do you mean? Where do you live? You know, kids will tell you anything. And then they say a shelter. And you're looking at the child like, what in the world happens here? And then it begins to break your heart. It does. And then you begin to think, how many people are out there like that? You know, that's just one stumble across. But how many out there just simply won't communicate because it's embarrassing? And anything can happen in this economy. By the way, this economy is not good. Being in the right place at the right time normally happens with obedience to the Lord. Not walking in a type of rebellion or selfishness, which is to kick love away. When you kick love away, you're not going to be in the right place at the right time. The reward for that conversation was that I could actually do something for those children, for that family, and to be obedient to the Lord. That, that gives me, that's my reward, to be able to do something for the Lord. And it's not that, I didn't do it alone, folks. This is from COT to them. This is from Council of Time to them. There are quite a few people that know of Council of Time for that very reason. I remember I told, uh, I told Angie, we're accountable for every penny anybody ever gives to COT. Every penny. Every dime. And the right thing has to be done with it. I'm accountable for every dime. I get in my pocket anyway. I'm accountable for what I do with it. How bad would it be to get to the kingdom? And the Lord says, yep, I gave you quite a few things. And look at all these people you didn't help. There's no way in the world I can live with that burden. That's just me. You can call me crazy, uh, you know, touched in the head or whatever you want to say. But I know my own convictions. I know that what we're living in a time is very real and no one's, very few people are taking it seriously. I know that things that we have become acquainted to and accustomed to are about to vanish. I know that some people trust in their own comfort and thus they can talk you know, big in front of other people and point out the fallacies of other folks concerning the Word of God. I'm talking about scoffers. But I know something they don't. They've been blinded to the actual fact of what's been happening. I speak to people all the time and can hear things all the time and these scoffers will come and they'll say this or that is not going to happen and is not happening. They're not speaking by truth. They judge of those things they can see. But they've been blocked from the Spirit. They're speaking out of their own spirits. They're saying that peace and safety and all this nonsense is coming. And there has been no peace anywhere in any country for a long time. They talk from the positions of their living room. You see, a lot of us sometimes, and if we're not careful, we'll do the same thing. Just because we have peace in our living room does not mean that this world has peace. We cannot equate the global happenings based on our homes. We're blessed to live in quietness at the moment. But around you, the world is quaking. It's shaking. Animals are dying in the masses. 
Tons of fish continue to wash up every single week. Birds are continuing to die. Livestock is dying. Diseases are breaking out. Famines are happening. The rate at which animals are killing human beings is beginning to skyrocket. Come to find out there's a disease that takes over the brain that causes an animal to lose their fear of any human. If they lose their fear of humans, more and more animals will attack. See how real this stuff is? That's why I'm thankful for people like Jesse and Pastor Paul. That's why I'm thankful for Larry, who does our news, looking up articles. That's why I'm thankful for JCD and Mayor that help out in the news and all these other individuals in the Hagmans that give us information. Is all of it absolutely 100% accurate? Things are always fluid. That doesn't mean they're lying. If someone comes to you and tells you something, you know, I hear people do this all the time. They'll get an advisement, and they'll say, from where I'm standing, it looks like this or that can happen. People don't take it under advisement. They wait until the time passes and point at a person and then say, oh, they lied. They didn't declare something. They didn't prophesy and say the Lord said this or that. They were telling you that it looked like something could happen. There was a probability that that could happen. That's far different than a prophecy. One day they're going to go back and need those same people. You know why they're going to go back? Because scientists, economists, and nobody else is going to have an explanation for what's happening. And instead of searching their spirit, because they can't, they've been cut off. That's going to be horrible. How would you feel if you searched your heart for an answer in the Word of God, but the words of God look like gibberish to you? In other words, your ability to comprehend the Word of God was stripped from you. You couldn't understand it. You can't get through it. Some of you remember a long time ago when you first started reading the King James, it was nonsense. And then all of a sudden when you became serious about it, reading the King James... The Lord allowed you to begin to understand the words as though it was second nature. But when you first started reading it, you were like, I can't read this. I can't. And it took you to press through. Then the Lord opens things up. You see, he can make you comprehend. If, if this Bible, if the King James Version was only available in Hindu and none of us spoke Hindu, and the Lord needed us to learn, trust me, we'd begin to understand it. All we have to do is press The Lord does marvelous things, but imagine yourself being cut off from comprehending God's Word. Imagine the same way you looked at the King James, and it did look like, you know, too many of these and thou's. Imagine that being a thousand times worse. Imagine a famine in the land so bad that it's very difficult to utter any scripture about the Lord for those inhabitants to turn their back on God. And that's just the beginning. You see, there's going to be a spiritual disaster, natural disasters, and a heavenly shaking so horrible that men will cast everything aside. They're going to really think that their lives are over, so keeping any laws is no good. It will be utter lawlessness. And all these people that said, oh, that'll never happen. They haven't studied enough. They have not studied. If men's hearts are failing them for fear for what's coming upon the earth, then someone told them. Or they saw it. And they were talking amongst themselves about a horror to come. Something will pass this earth. And that itself, even though it will not touch the earth, it's going to cause some people to die simply because of the sight of it. And it's going to be absolutely natural. And then they're going to say, some more of it's coming. Then they're really going to panic. Hard to conceive, but thank God for Jesus because these events will absolutely happen. Where do we stand when it takes place? Are we still trapped in our concerns of this world? Or are we doing the will of our Father in this earth? 
I don't know about you. But if anything ever happens to me, I want it to happen while I'm doing the will of my Father. If the Lord comes back and He decides to fulfill all His prophecies while I'm sleeping, I want to be doing the work of the Lord when He does come back. You see, I don't want to be caught drifting back into the mindset that we shared long time ago in the folly of this world, relaxing in my you know, recliner watching a movie on television, taking no thought of anything anywhere, no petitioning, no prayer, no Bibles open, just seeking something. And the Lord knows the truth of our hearts. That's why we can't lose that initial motive that we had within our hearts that caused us to be here in the first place because it did not come from us. You think it may have come from your curiosity, but curiosity is sparked from something internal. The Holy Spirit nudged you before you knew what the Holy Spirit was. And the book of Jeremiah only serves to expand the heart of our Father and His words pertaining to His own people. And then it tells us clearly what's going to happen to the rest. We're going to take a break. I'll be right back. Okay, Tatum, that's enough. That's enough, Tatum. Thank you, Tatum. I don't know why that reminds me of Tatum. It's probably because of her energy. Anyway, folks, I had no idea. I talked without a break that long. I had no idea. No idea whatsoever. Folks, remember, it's the, it's the holidays. You know what? Let me say something about the holidays. I know a lot of people, we know what the holiday is. We know what it represents. But I'm going to share something with you. I, I, for one, will take advantage of any holiday mankind will ever think of and do a good work for the Lord in that day. You know, they're not worshiping the devil on Christmas. And though a lot of people think it's a pagan holiday, it is a day that people recognize as a day when love is given to another. I, for one, won't withhold that from another. I won't do it. I'm going to use this time and this holiday to convey our Father's love to someone. I will absolutely do that, to convey our Father's love to someone so that they won't feel left in the cold and again, there are people who have no one. Some people have no one. Who's going to go see them? Who's going to show that? Not, not the people who are, you know, um, okay, well, to do, having parties and this, that, and the other. That, that's going to happen. But I'm going to really go deep this time. You know, I did it one year. I'll share some pictures with you guys. They're quite funny to a degree and you'll know it's me because I'll be on the you know video camera from time to time so when you see the photos you'll say yep that's him but sometimes I like to go into society and see for myself I have to experience it myself it's much more personal that way for me to go there myself but I want to convey that love to another Certainly, certainly after the children, you know, you, when you interact with kids and you begin to see that they perceive this day as a day of love, they perceive Christmas as a day of love, and, and some of them, they don't do the Santa thing, right? But they perceive it as a day of love. Well, if they perceive it as a day of love, I'm certainly not going to withhold it from somebody else, from anybody that comes across my path. So I'll use this as an opportunity in many ways. You know, I did that Halloween too. While they were out there doing the Halloween thing, I started talking about the Lord to a few folks. I do. I take advantage of, of you know what, in the Bible, if a person deems a day, a holiday for themselves to celebrate the Lord, then it said do it. Don't, it said, don't chastise that person. 
The Bible says it's in there. Don't chastise that person. I'll do it. I'll take advantage. I know what it's like, by the way, to to uh, somewhat be isolated on Christmas and, and not really interact with anybody. You know, sometimes you get to the point where you don't like holidays. You really do. I was stuck in a foxhole. Uh, some of you who have been in the services, you know what I'm talking about. You're out there in the field. Whether you're in the CP, battalion, wherever you were. You were not at home with your family. You couldn't contact them. Because you're stuck in the field. You're stuck in theater. And every holiday, someone has to be in theater. And it just so happened, I was one of those people. But I didn't mind it. I didn't mind it. It causes you to reflect and not take things for granted. In fact, when you're in the service, and some of you service guys, some of you gentlemen that were in the service, it's always important for me to remember that thought of how much you took for granted when there's no freedom because it helps you to reflect. It helps you to reflect and appreciate where you are it helps recenter you if we could do that with the Lord's word can you imagine can you imagine if we could appreciate the words of our Lord and never take them for granted can you imagine because most people who have had their freedoms taken away and their freedoms then become a privilege they understand they understand what I'm talking about in a like manner, most of us have been through that. They're called trials and tribulations. It doesn't matter if we put ourselves in the trial, if we did something to cause it or not. You still had it. It's still going to be used for your good. Folks, I say this. Take advantage of every opportunity you have to shine your light of compassion and love upon someone you're sowing seeds of love. You know what it's written about love? It covers a multitude of sins. Love does. Can you imagine that? Love covers a multitude of sins. It's also a pretty big seed. We sow a lot of seeds. All of them do not yield a hundredfold. But there are some seeds it was written about. They do yield a hundredfold. That's hard to imagine. A hundredfold, that kind of takes up all the other seeds that you ever planted. Right? And it does away with them. It covers a multitude of sins. And if it does so, if love covers a multitude of sins, then certainly it outgrows some of those seeds you planted. Which means... Your harvest is tasty again and not bitter. That's what it means. And believe me, when the trouble begins, when the tumult begins, you're going to need every good seed you ever sowed in this world. You see, because we do have to reap what we sow. And some people have sowed non-compassion, criticisms, accusations and everything else and they're going to have to reap that. And they're going to have to reap it in a time when they need compassion and love and everything else. And then what? So guess what? I take the Lord's path but I'm highly aware I take his path knowing that this world is going to be plunged into a state very few can comprehend. I can be aware if I, I can be aware of the doom of the earth and still conduct myself as a strong believer in my Lord. And the whole point of most of these discussions that we have 
is so that you don't fall apart during that moment of calamity. There's obvious things out there. We know terrorists are out there and everything else. We know they're out there. But no one should fall apart in the moment of calamity. Certainly, if you're covered by the blood. Can, you imagine, can I share something with you? It's kind of funny. Imagine yourself fully protected from everything, right? But you're falling down on the ground. Shrieking in horror, nothing's touching you. It's kind of like being afraid of a dog that's behind a cage within another cage on six leashes and the dog only weighs 16 ounces and you're terrified the dog can never get out never touch you but you're terrified so you fall on the ground and you're terrified nothing can ever hurt you but you're still terrified of that little bitty dog just locked away and it's only 16 ounces a soda can would be bigger than that dog is and you're terrified. Well, see, if you're covered by the blood of the Lamb, that's kind of what it's like. Most people fear something's going to happen to their flesh. Don't fear that. You're about to undergo a transition. Don't be scared of that little 16-ounce dog. Stand in your capacity. Recognize your capacity. Recognize who you are. Recognize him. You'll be able to stand. The Lord will give you a strength to stand. Your enemies will come against you, but they won't prosper. They're not going to prosper. Nothing's going to overtake you. They may hate you, but nothing is going to overtake you. That's what we all need to remember. And you know what? That takes practice to trust the Lord more and more. And so we take every opportunity we have now. All the trials and tribulations, everything that went wrong. See, because a lot of us fall apart at tiny, tiny situations. And the bigger ones are coming. But I feel in my heart that's when most people are going to be defined and they're going to stand pretty tall. Those of us who have been really strong, we will probably need your help. I will never, ever say I'm not going to need your help. You know, I learned in combat that you can brag all day. But once the danger comes, it's a very different story. Very different story. It's a testing ground. The weak do become strong. The strong become weak. And in that respect, I thank God for everybody. You see, whether you realize it or not, you're part of a big family. And the Lord didn't place everything in one vessel to tackle the world by his or herself. He didn't do that. He formed us into a body with many members, many disciplines, many skills. And one day we're going to have to rely on each other's skill sets. I do it now. I can recognize it now. In fact, I take joy in it now. There's so many disciplines within this body, so many skill sets. It, it's mind-blowing. It really is mind-blowing. But it also assures me that if something were to come, I've been shown some pretty strong ones. They're very quiet, but they will stand up in a time when it's needed. They really will. They're not just talking. They're not just saying, thank you, Jesus, just to fill up the chat room. They mean it. They do, and they mean it. They mean it. And by the way, I have to tell you guys this, because I told somebody I was going to tell you. There's one Christmas song that has made me cry since I was little. Can anybody guess what it is? Since it's, you know, around the Christmas holidays, there's just one song that makes me cry, breaks me up, messes me up. A song you probably would not guess. We should have had, enough. We should have had a uh, contest on this one. Who said that? Yes, it is a drummer boy. Who is that Terry Tony? 
Yeah, it's a little drummer boy. It affects me deeply. The little drummer. You know why it affects me? When the song played, I can remember when I was small when the song played. I was imagining the song. When I'm hearing a song, I imagine scenery and things of that nature. But this little boy had nothing to offer. He first he recognized he knew who it was, and he had nothing to offer him. And then he the part that hits me is this when he said, I'll play my drum for you. That's all he had was his drum, and he said, I'll play my drum for you. In other words, he used he, he was willing he wanted to give of himself so much and he told him I have nothing to give you. I, I have nothing to offer. And then he said, I'll play my drum for you. And then at the end when it says, and then he smiled at me. Oh, that just messes me up. I turned into a big softy. You know, I tried to listen to that song this morning and cut it off. Can you imagine? I couldn't go through it. Couldn't go through it. Because here's this little boy that reminded me of me. And, it, you know, having little to offer. Having just very little to offer. But I was willing to take that little bit I had at that time to do what I needed to do for the Lord. I had that heart like that. This, this, that song, you know how when you hear a song and it matches something in your heart, something you're willing to do? Well, that little drummer boy, that, that's what's in my heart to do something like that. And that really, to see, but to picture a child having, a poor child, a poor child having nothing to offer. And he says, I'll play my drum for you. That, that breaks me. Okay, I'm not talking about that. Not talking about. Oh, St. Nicholas. Do you guys know the true story about St. Nicholas? Of course, they messed up the story. He doesn't live in the North Pole, by the way. There's a true story about St. Nicholas. At that time, it was, very, it was a very impoverished place at that time, St. Nicholas. And what he used to do was leave money on the doorsteps of people that were in great need. And he would never let them. He would never let them know that they didn't know he was doing it. Because if he had got caught doing that, he would have been in big trouble. He would have been in big trouble. And so he used to leave that money on their doorsteps to help them out. That's the true story of Saint Nicholas. That's the true story. But uh, it was um, no. Well, they twisted the story up. They really did. They twisted that story up. They did. It's, you, you, I know that part about him because I read that in something very old, but then I saw a documentary on it, and they, they spend the whole they They spend too much. They were spending too much. Amen, Jesse. That little drummer boy, I can't listen to that drummer boy song, I'm telling you the truth. It'll, if I heard it right now, it would get me. So now that you guys know and someone's bound to sing it, right, I'm going to plug my ears. No, I won't plug my ears, but I'm not going to be on air not doing it. There's no way in the world. Because I couldn't go. I was getting choked up talking about it. I just find it precious to give whatever you have. Give whatever you have. You know, that's part of my mindset, though. That's what makes me a loony tune the way I am. It, it really does. Because I am willing to give what I have to do whatever the Lord gave me, to take my resources and just attempt to accomplish something. That's just part of me. That's just part of me. And it's reward in that. It really is a reward. You see, yeah, I may know some things that the average person does not know, you know, because of my profession. But uh, it's all in prophecy. But when it becomes your reality and you say, you know, Lord, I'm not going to be here long. And you're not trying to save your life anymore, but you're trying to help your brothers and sisters out. You're trying all of what you can try. You're doing all of what you can do to bring somebody to the knowledge of the truth, which is that the Lord loves you. And he can forgive you of everything you ever did wrong. 
that he can clean you from the inside out. So you tend to do whatever you can do to get that out there. And guess what? If that makes me a loony tune, then so be it. I'm just a loon. I'll be that loon. But it also takes compassion. You know, some people have that, but they have no compassion. They don't have any compassion. They, like a robot, they'll perform things of the Lord, but they have no compassion. That part is tragic. Because they have no good ending. But we do. And it takes us consistently encouraging one another. Not hoping for someone's doom or failure. Or say, yep, the Lord's going to pay you back and you're going to get... No, don't have that attitude. My, Our attitudes right now should be like our Father's attitude towards us. You see, when we were in our worst moment, He sent His Son for us. Not at our best. We were not at our best moments. We were at our worst moments. In our sins and corruptness, he sent his son and prepared that. He knew about the Nephilim. He knew about the world was going to be corrupted. He knew about Israel and all the things they would do. He knew about America from the beginning. He knew about me as an individual. He knew about all of us. And he said, I'm sending my son. Because he wants us all to go home. He wants us to be authentic. He wants us to be real. He wants to bestow upon us a great many things. All we have to do is operate with his integrity, with truth, with simplicity. You know, a prophet's job was very simple. How many people know that? It was not complicated. The Lord would speak to them directly. He would tell them everything to say. They would go do it. That was it. He would tell them that, no, the people are not going to listen to you. In fact, they're going to kick you out. But don't fear. I'm with you. Their job was simple. His word is not complicated. It's very simple. Jesus said, follow me. Repent of your sins and follow me. Walk after me. Look at me. Look at what I did. Be like I was in the world. He said to the disciples, I no longer call you servants, but I call you friends. You see, a servant does not know things above his master, right? But through the Holy Ghost, they were able to know what he knew. He told them they would do, people would do greater things than what he did. I think people are looking for a lot of miracles and things like that, right? But listen, you're operating in a time that's very difficult to operate in. You're being bombarded like no other generation before you has been bombarded. Your mind is constantly consumed with something. Yet you're still walking. You're still seeking peace. That's a miracle within itself. Do you know how easy it is? To be entrapped by the things of this world, to be ensnared. That's a miracle within itself. How many situations can rise? The system itself is corrupted, folks. It's corrupted, designed. It's not designed for a Christian to prosper, but it's designed to weed your faith out because everything they ask you to do so that you can make it will cause you to compromise something within you. It will. It'll it'll force you to compromise. And you don't want to compromise. And so you're in a state of perpetual conflict. But if you stand on the word of the Lord, you say, well, Lord, guess what? If it does not go by your word, I don't want it. I don't want it. You see, that's a simple decision. I had to make that decision. It was to be devoted to to the enemy's camp or to walk in the blood of the Lamb. It was as simple as that. It was very simple. And only the Lord can call you out. 
That's right, because no one born in a prison recognizes that place as a prison. The Lord has to show it to you. And he placed something within you so that you could see it. That means he wants you home. And if he wants you home, what on earth can stop him from getting you home? Can anything in heaven or in earth stop him from getting you home? No, I don't think so. Don't have fear in the coming days. Let love play its role in your life. His love, not our love, not what we think as love. His love. We can't define. You know what? Love comes is the Father. God is love. If we define it, we'll put limitations on it. We'll add to it and take away from it. We can convey love like our Father, but it's not the same love as His. His is very different. It's higher than ours. Higher. See, it's absolute, 100% pure. It's pure. It's not tainted. And there are no conditions. He does love us unconditionally. Normally, we love each other through a condition. We'll say, we love, well, I love you, but I, I don't want to talk to you. Well, what, what is that? What if the Lord said that? Well, I love you, but I don't want to talk to you. Well, I love you, but I can't, I can't be around you. Where'd that come from? Is that not conditional? Because love conveyed is without restriction. Not our definition of love is. Folks, this old talk. To be a person of high integrity in all things. To be who you were predestined to be. He didn't predestine any of us to fail him. By the way, it's impossible to fail him. You can only fail yourself. But he didn't destine us to do something halfway and then quit. We need to discover. Some of us need to discover what he has destined for us. You can almost feel it. You have a hint of it. You just need to obtain it. And the only way to obtain it is to become a person of integrity right now. Certainly concerning his word, not a hypocrite, not a religious person. But to be a person of integrity, a vessel of his love to your fellow man. By the way, your fellow man is everybody but you. That's who your fellow man is or your fellow woman. It's everybody but you. And we have to maintain it. You know what's easier to do the right thing than it is the wrong thing? When you do a wrong thing, you end up debating with yourself. You justify what you have to do. When you do the right thing, you simply go and do it. And you feel free while doing so. Does the world look upon you good when you do the right thing? No, they don't. Is it always going to make somebody upset or mad? Yes, it will. So understand this, that doing the right thing is only going to draw out the evil in somebody else who's against it. That's always going to happen because Satan's agents are everywhere. And at a moment of weakness, newsflash, at a moment of weakness, Satan can step into anybody and use them. If you're weak, he can step into you and make you say something to somebody else. He can nudge your emotions. The Lord says a man is drawn away and tempted of his own lusts. Anything within us that does not belong, that is not God. Satan has the ability to use. That includes your emotions. That includes your belief system and everything else. And when you're covered in the blood of the Lamb, those things begin to be destroyed. The change is happening and nobody can see it. The problems are mounting and nobody can see it. In time, all the problems you have today will not exist because there will be a whole new set of circumstances on the face of the earth. 
Take advantage of each moment. Be thankful for each moment you're here, that you're given another moment to perform any works of the Lord. Don't take it for granted. Don't complain about the day given to you. Utilize it. Take advantage of it. Realize that the Father has granted this time so that you could further your walk in Him. He will send His angels to gather you from the four quarters of the earth. You will transition. At the same time, this world is plunged in a deep, gross darkness. So never have fear of that. We're going to see the abomination of desolation standing where it ought not. We're going to see oblation or prayers cease. We're going to see some shiftings in the Middle East. And I'm, you know what? I apologize if anybody does not share that belief. But the Word says it, and I have to stick with it. The Word says what's going to happen over there, and I have to be prepared for it. It's shifting more and more in that direction. I know that scoffers are going to come straight to Israel and say, whoop, their God has abandoned them. I have to remain in character. Even if it makes me angry internally, I must not convey it. But walk in humility and meekness. Always. I know what's coming, and that's only part of it. I know demons are operating. That's why we need to stay of a high integrity. Because if we're not serving the Lord and the things that we do, we're serving Satan. There's no other, there's no other entity to serve on this earth but the Lord and the evil one. Where we fail to choose the Lord, the evil one, we're doing his work. See how that works? The Lord said, Choose ye this day whom ye will serve. We're vessels of his love and his grace and his mercy and his power and his authority. We have rights that the rest of the world does not have. We are the last line of defense. We are the strength and the repair of our nations, our respective nations. We are. If you're looking to the nation for a solution, it's not going to work. God works through his vessels, and from the vessels they work to the people. He will work directly. That's called the day of the Lord. That's what that is. Folks, good living room discussion, I hope. I hope I didn't bore you. Sometimes I get a little sentimental, especially when talking about the little drummer boy. No one laugh at that. That's a, that's, I, I can't. That, that song just touches me. That has to be the most precious song I've ever heard. Has to be. Folks, I do love you. We'll jump right back into the book of Jeremiah. Hopefully in our next talk, we will. But also do this, do this. Don't be soon shaken when the war drums or not beating, but being thrown. Okay? Let that be a hint. Many, many countries are pressed into a corner. The system is rising. And certain people will be thrust out of that system, taken over. So there will be a shift in leadership in a few nations. We can see that in the book of Daniel, and it's happening in real time. Keep that in mind. Folks, I love you. God bless each and every one of you. Stay tuned for the news that's coming up in a moment after I find the buttons. God bless.